all the way from Providence, Rhode Island. Welcome to the Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners. Let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. Welcome back. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I I genuinely feel awful for Harry in this chapter. Agreed. Uh, I, you know, we were talking and have been talking about the idea of a low point. When is your low point in your story? And that, of course, is it's a requirement for any story that you're trying to tell because that indicates the beginning or maybe sometimes even the middle or even the end, but it indicates a... Uh, uh, a point in your story, a point in your arc. As I drop my pen, now I'm now I'm all messed up. I gotta have my pen. <laughs> you don't need your pen. And it's a pointing a device. It's a pointing device. I don't know. It's just it makes me feel more comfortable having a pen in my hand. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's an indication of where you are in your story. And in, in, in Harry's case, this is the beginning. This is the the, the way uh, that he has to travel back up. And man. You know, without knowing the rest of the story, without knowing the rest of the book, this feels like a pretty big low point for me. I would agree. At least after a certain amount of time goes by from here on out, Ron and he will make up because he is he is alone. He doesn't even get to hear Sirius's tip on how to defeat this dragon. <laughs> it is quite, quite crazy. So um, I would agree. I would agree. Here we are at this low point. Well, here we are, chapter 19, The Hungarian Horntail. It's a strange thing, but when you are dreading something and you would give anything to slow down time, it has a disobliging habit of speeding up. The days until the first task seemed to slip by as though someone had fixed the clocks to work at double speed. Harry's feeling of barely controlled panic was with him wherever he went, as ever-present as the snide comments about the Daily Prophet article. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> <laughs> not great oh you know what i'll just play it not great bob true. there you go very Poor very Harry. true just honestly. like hearing all these things honestly trying to go to the three broomsticks sticks can't do it mm-hmm. using a um a, an invisibility cloak which doesn't even work with some people like oh man i mean that is a really spectacular eye because that invisibility right. invisibility cloak is a deathly hallow well, that was a conversation i wanted to get into in, we in, will in later a, yeah, but absolutely. yes okay so we want to take a moment though to thank all of you listening whether you're watching us live on facebook or youtube or you're listening to us through one of your podcatchers of choice we create the pottercast free of charge free of charge as gilderoy the, lockhart the would Potter say verse. what did i say the pot- you said the podcast oh shoot come on girl i <laughs> <laughs> the Potterverse. Got to get the branding right now. Trying, Blake. It was all started from you dropping your pen. It just threw us up. Oh my goodness <laughs> gracious! The See, I told Potterverse you the pen works. Podcast. There we go. <laughs> we created all of this. <clears throat> Free of charge. Yes, there you go. <laughs> because it hopefully brings some lumos in the time of your knocks. That being said, I would love to ask a favor of you. You know, it's the month of October right now and we're recording this. I mean, if you're listening to in the future, this is still something that I would recommend. Take a screenshot of the app, okay? Or if you're joining us live right now watching the video, take a screenshot, pop it in your stories. On Instagram, you can tag us at Mary and Blake Media. On Facebook, you can use the hashtag The Potterverse. Um, but let people know that if they're Harry Potter fans, this podcast is churning out brand new content every single week. We would love for more people to join us there. And the other thing, I'm going to ask is that you leave a written review and rating in Apple Podcasts. I want to thank um, a guy. O95, A-G-U-A-Y-O-95, who says, fantastic podcast. I've continuously have reread the Harry Potter series since I was in grade school, but this is the first time I've decided to read along with a podcast. I've gained such a new perspective on characters and storylines. So thank you so much to you and everyone who else has taken the time to leave a written review on Apple Podcasts. Let's get into the show. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. As I said, this is chapter 19, The Hungarian Horntail. And to catch you up, if you're not currently quick, you know, reading one chapter along with us, a brief synopsis is the article that Rita Skeeter wrote is wretched. 
wretched, <laughs> full of lies. It doesn't even include Cedric Diggory. I want to throw my book in, in madness about it. But it also makes the students of Hogwarts pick on Harry, pick on Hermione. Um, Hermione still is trying to get Harry and Ron to be friends. It's not working. Harry and Hermione do go um, out into town at Hogsmeade under the invisibility cloak. We get to see Mad-Eye Moody there and Hagrid. Hagrid tells him, hey, I got something cool to show you. And in fact, it's dragons, which is going to be the first task, which is really cool. And Harry gets to chat with Sirius Black, his godfather. And then oh, he's got one more thing, to, one more person to chat with, too. He's got Ron. He's got Ron to chat with yeah, at the end we'll of this talk chapter. About that. This is... <laughs> <laughs> there was a, you know what? There was a line in this in this chapter. Maybe you'll get a scar. That's what you want, right? Yeah. That one? <laughs> no, no. It was uh, it was Hermione talking about Spew, where she was like, you know what? I'm not sure if this is enough direct action. Maybe I should go right down to the kitchens. But and Harry's like, come on, Hermione, would you stop? That is totally you. One hundred percent, you. I I read that and I I chuckled briefly to myself because yeah. I was I was in the library. <laughs> it's funny because I'm able to really take these three Gryffindors and just mush them combined. And I'm like, that's me. Yes. That's me. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> but you're definitely Ron too. Like that is that's that you're Ron and you're definitely Harry in that situation. Like maybe you get get a scar too. That's what you want, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's how we fight. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you want this? That's more of a Ron move, though, that Harry would do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just loving it. I loved it all. <laughs> Give me all the feelings from this trio. I can. I just can't get enough of it. So um, we start things off, as I said, with the issues of Rita Skeeter's article, which let's just let's just hang out for a fact that she misspelled Flo Delacour yeah. and Victor Crumb's names. She butchered them. Not even spelled correctly. <laughs> Forget Cedric Diggory. Like, mind you, this is the Daily Prophet, so we're assuming that this is for, like, the the witches and wizards community of England. So maybe in um, in France where Fleur is, maybe they have a beautiful piece on Fleur. Sure. But for this to be the local paper where Cedric's family, friends, yeah. neighbors... Yeah, all, all they want to do is just read about their kid. You know Amos Diggory bought, like, 50, and he said, <laughs> oh, you know... I, I, That's my boy! <laughs> and they don't even have his name in it! <laughs> <laughs> he changed, he popped into everyone's flu network, you know, like, oh, can I have a piece of toast? By the way, don't forget, Daily Profit tomorrow. My boy's in it. My boy! He's <laughs> in it! No! My boy is in it! Can we just have a moment, too, that Cedric isn't pouting? He's no, not, not like... No, you know, no, not at all. Because you know what? That's Cedric. Why is that Cedric? Just tell me about this wonderful Hufflepuff. You know, I, I've kind of... Started to turn a little bit on Cedric here. And Puffs in general. I mean, because most of our friends are Puffs. That's the cool thing. That is that is the thing that as much as Blake busts on Puffs. Oh, yeah. No. It's... I mean, that's a shirt in and of itself. Blake buffs on Puffs. Um, <laughs> honestly, most people in our life who are near and dear are Hufflepuffs. Yes. So he's going to stop hating so much because now he's also hanging out with Cedric in the book. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm saying I'm making a turn. I'm making a turn on Cedric. And it's the happening. fact that he, the fact that he doesn't complain here at all, doesn't say anything, doesn't have an issue with it, he just goes about his day. I'm in. I'm in on this. I like that. I like it. You know who would be complaining? Ron Weasley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, here's here's a thing that I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Thank you, Ollivander. The fact that Rita Skeeter has now that needs to be a sound bite. What? I wonder. That's true. That's a good point. Uh, Rita Skeeter has written the fact that Harry and Hermione, their boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah, man. And is. I just wonder if this is. Just painted on thick on Ron's poor heart. Yeah, is this <laughs> one of those things finally where Ron, even like in his deepest of hearts that he doesn't even recognize i mean you can call it your subconscious fine whatever but like is this like in the deep of his soul one of the things that really bothers yeah. him about harry and hermione let's go back to when we were 14 and your first friend got their first significant other their first boyfriend or girlfriend you didn't even like their boyfriend or girlfriend but you sat there being jealous that someone liked them i'll never forget sixth grade yeah that early people had french kissing competitions on the playground after school mm -hmm. yep 
A, it looked gross. B, I knew what those kids ate for lunch, so I was glad kind of that I wasn't French kissing them. Yet there was a piece of me saying like, why am I not French kissing somebody? Why don't I have a boyfriend? Why can't I swap Dunkaroos with somebody? Seriously. (laughs) (laughs) Thank God I didn't. I look back in hindsight. We used to time them with our little, you know, 1993 watches. Oh, the little Timex watch with like a little blow in the dock. So you can kiss the longest. But what I'm getting at is that- gross. Man, listen, we were 11. We were like Sorcerer Stone or Chamber of Secrets age. Not bright. Oh. And how did nobody driving by? Like, this was a public playground. Nobody yeah. driving by was like, look at those four couples of 12-year-olds necking. Eating each other. <laughs> uh, anyway, what I'm saying is that being the awkward, proud nerd that I am, and I have always been my entire life, it took me a little while to blossom into actually having somebody like me and ask me out, nonetheless kiss me. Um, but I was jealous that other people had someone, oh, somebody to love. Like, I wanted that. I didn't even know if I wanted that person. So, yes, Ron may not even realize that he has feelings blossoming or have beginning whatever for Hermione. But the fact that Harry and Hermione are on the cusp of all this definitely could add an extra factor. It's not mentioned in the books, but it could add a factor. Yeah, no, it's not there in the text. But and it plants the seed because Harry Ron has this fear. Absolutely. That Hermione, eventually, I mean, when we get to the Deathly Hallows. Let's be you know, real. We're all sitting here being like, Harry probably should have, you know, dated Hermione at some point. I was a Hermione... Harry Shipper, I will. I will definitely. I'm say a fan that. of book Ginny Harry combo <sighs> movie Ginny. Mm, little schnooze fest. Schnooze fest. It's it's. She's just a blank wall. Like there's nothing. There's literally nothing there in the in the films. I love how like her hotline is like. I can stay up here too if you'd like. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What else? Oh, what else? I do love Bonnie Wright. I think that yeah. there are many great things about her, but I just gotta say, book Ginny smoke. No, show. the the, char- the characterization of movie Ginny. It's not necessarily Bonnie Wright. It is the, ca- yes, the, the, yes, the yes. characterization, the directorial choices uh, of it, how she's just a a blank slate. She's just book Ginny is supposed to be one tough cookie of just sass and. I love it. But let's let's stay with the hooker yes. horn tail. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Yes, absolutely. Sorry. Go ahead. It's a daily profit. <laughs> That's how far we are in our discussion. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the first paragraph. <laughs> We've been going go. on now for 13 there minutes. You go. But it, nonetheless, it's just it's a pain in the butt. Colin Creevy just will not stop messing. He just he's a pebble in Harry's shoe. You know what I mean? He and his brother between saying, Oh yeah, he hangs up with Hermione all the mm. time. And then later on we get to see him and his brother trying to take these, you know, Cedric Diggory, Potter Stinks pins. They, they just got stuck on Potter Stinks. <laughs> they didn't even have Cedric anymore inside of it. My goodness gracious. Oh, Harry does bump into Cho, though. We're talking about oh, little love interest. Girl. It's a very small little bump. Um, but I just, I love to, love to call that out. And uh, Harry, throughout this chapter, pains for Ron. Misses Ron. The, the, the Wonski faint. Yeah. The, the, what was it even? Uh, wonky, wonky faint thing. Is that how... Hermione says it and he says, oh man, you know what his head, if Ron were only here, like how he would have rolled his eyes and reacted to her saying it incorrectly. He really misses his friend and. You know, it's just that like he, the way that I feel about it is that Ron is to Harry like that, like a, I don't want to say a Prozac, but just he, Ron to Harry is that person that just, dude, let's just go play some Quidditch or let's chill out. It, but yet Hermione, like the friendship between Harry and Hermione is, is great and it is special in its own way. But the Ron and Harry relationship, I think, is wholly separate. And I think it. I think of John Mayer's comfortable song. Our love is comfortable. Yes. You know? Yes, absolutely. Hermione challenges Harry and Ron. Ron just lets him be. Yes. And like, I, you know, for the most part throughout the books, Ron is known when to shut up. And when to push and when to just be like, okay, we're getting out of here. I mean, we even saw it early in one of the chapters where it's like, nope, we're going to go. We're going yep. to go play some Quidditch. See you later. Yeah. Um, that's important. I think Harry absolutely needs that. He does not right now need a person that's like, let's go to the library. You know, like. Uh, I mean, he does. 
Well, he's a Triwizard Tournament champion, and he needs to know how to fight a dragon. Yeah, that's true. Good point. <laughs> Good point. That's but that's why he has, supposedly has Sirius, but. Never and we also see that Ron is able to still be social without Harry. You know, when we go into Honey Dukes, for example, I believe Ron is there. Um, and he's originally Hermione wanted Harry to meet up with Ron, but they didn't. Um, but instead they go in. I think Ron's there with some other. Are we sitting with Fred, George and Lee Jordan? At other points we've seen him with Dean and, and Seamus. So Ron is able to kind of float around. And what's interesting is that I never really see that for Harry. That mm-hmm. when Harry and Ron are separated, I never see Harry being able to kick it and chill and hang out with a different group. And I think that part of this is because Ron has grown up in such a large family that he can have a tiff with Fred, sure. but still hang with George or Percy or who be okay with it. Exactly. He can skip around. And I feel bad that Harry doesn't have that. Harry is, I've said it before and I'll say it, say it again. Harry is beloved and hated so strongly in these series that really you could see how alone he is. That his only person who wants to hang out with him aside from Hermione is Colin Creevy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Harry. What's going on? Not ideal. Not ideal. Uh, yeah. I will tell you this as a person who had two sisters who were significantly older than me uh, were, were basically out of the house by the time I was 10-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were essentially an only child. I was essentially up. an old, only child. And you know, when I was in college, when I got into a, an argument with my best friend or whatever, I didn't want to be around anybody. I, I couldn't. I, I That's who I hung out with. I didn't just go hang out with other people. Like, that, that's just it. And then you got me, it, full of siblings. I got the backups. I got the backups uh, for the backups. Talking to everybody. Yep. Just flitting around. I'm Ron. <laughs> you are Ron. It's ridiculous. Uh, but I also Feed think- me and- <laughs> <laughs> Give me some tacos. Let me hang out on a couch and like play play a game. We're good. I think this also speaks to, again, we've, note, we've noted this now, I think for the past few episodes, Mary, Harry's exceptionalism- uh, and you've talked about it. He's so well loved and so hated in these books mm-hmm. that it's really, I think, in due in part to his ex- exceptionalism. He's I'm, really, I mean, he is. I'm Harry freaking Potter. He's Harry freaking Potter. And that will set him apart from people, both in good and bad ways. You're almost looking at him like a, a Luke Skywalker figure, where you're. Do, do I do I hang with this? Do I even talk to this kid? How he's the one who defeated Lord Voldemort not only as a baby, but at, in his first year, uh, and in his second year. Yeah. Uh, uh, how do you even how do you even talk to Harry Potter? I, I think that's why this chapter works so well, because Harry is exceptional, and also he doesn't want that exceptional status. He's thinking, my goodness, how great would it be when, when he's with uh, Hermione and the Three Broomsticks? My goodness, how great would it be if I was just a normal mm-hmm. kid? You know, a rejection of his status. I, if I could just not be in the Triwizard Tournament, if I could just sit here with Ron and Hermione, drinking pumpkin uh, cheering butterbeer. Cheering on Cedric. Yeah, cheering I mean, on Cedric from, from the back. Like, uh, that is such a well-written uh, uh, portion yeah. of this chapter. It goes like this. What wouldn't he have given to be one of these people, sitting around laughing and talking without nothing to worry about but homework? He imagined how it would have felt to be here if his name hadn't come out of the Goblet of Fire. He wouldn't be wearing the invisibility cloak, for one thing. Ron would be sitting with him. The three of them would probably be happily imagining what deadly, dangerous task the school's champions would be facing on Tuesday. He'd have really been looking forward to it, watching them do whatever it was, cheering on Cedric with everyone else, safe in a seat at the back of the stands. Yeah. That's where Harry wants to be. Oh, I loved that. You know, something that I've loved learning about as we read these books and we go through the films, um, that the the costume choices for, for these characters are really important. And Harry wanted nothing but to be in the back of the stands, just to be your average kid. And they dress him frequently in like the same gray shirt with a dark blue collar yeah. around yep. it. Yep. Yep. He wears muted clothes. And it's not that 
this is all he can afford. Harry obviously like gets into some really good money as as he goes into Gringotts and everything. So it's not the gray clothes that his family had given him what you know passed down from Dudley. This is his own choice to blend in yeah. in the films. And we get that and we get that feeling that he doesn't want to be a big deal ever. Yep. Aside I, from the Quidditch pitch. I would say I would say aside from the did you put your name in the goblet of fire? This is the first and so far, the biggest um, error the film made, not including this. Not including? Not including Harry going to the three broomsticks with Hermione mm. in the invisibility cloak. They bring out the emo, the sadness emotions in the next movie, but the yeah. loneliness the that loneliness. you're talking about, we don't necessarily get to feel interesting. You don't get that in, in the film. Like you get, the, you get the sense that like Harry's pissed off because of Ron. Mm-hmm. But he's got Hermione and he's off doing his own stuff. And it doesn't, but you get the sense that he's just like, okay, I'm focused on the Triwizard Tournament. That's what I'm focused on Mm -hmm. here. But having this moment, this vulnerable moment of saying, okay, I'll go to the three broomsticks with you, but I don't want to be seen by anybody. And I don't care if you look stupid, if you're talking to yourself, I can't, I just, I want to be in by myself. I'm, again, rejecting my exceptionalism. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm rejecting all that makes me special. I'm rejecting the idea that I am I'm Harry freaking Potter. Just a kid that just doesn't want to do anything. And by not having that, you don't get to this significant low point that you need in order to feel and appreciate the triumph mm-hmm. yet tragedy that happens at the end of the film and Ugh. at the end of this book. Yeah. And and from this, he's going to be alienated even more. Like, just realize, you're saying this is the low point, but keep in mind, at the end of this, Cedric Diggory dies. He believes Voldemort's back. Harry is the only person who even sees Voldemort. It's not right. like anybody else even sees him. And we go into the following book, no one believes him. They all think he's crazy. So he went from this kid who supposedly stole the fame and glory of the Triwizard Tournament mm-hmm. to now he's lying and trying to make people believe that Voldemort's alive. Yep. It doesn't uh, get any better. Uh, no, I, I totally agree. You know how we all feel right now where we're like, oh, wow, 2021's ending. We thought it was going to be a much better year <laughs> than what it was. We thought it was going to be better than 2020. That's kind of how Harry feels from here on out. Like, I thought it might get better. Up. Oh, Dumbledore dies. Thought it might get better. Oh, I have to die. Great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just a bunch of fun. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> man. Oh, man. Hey, okay. How about how about Hermione saying getting well, getting mad at Crumb and all the people that follow him around in the library because you know he's doing reading and stuff and he's trying to catch I don't think up. She's on mad at Crumb. Well, she's mad because all the little girls that squeal and go yes. around him, they only like him because he's famous. How about the idea that she liked Lockhart because he was famous? Just throw uh, that was, out there. He was handsome. What I think is interesting, though, is obviously we, we know Victor Crumb as this stud athlete, but really he's a book nerd like Hermione, spending all of his time in the library. So yes. as he eventually ends up asking her to the Yule Ball, it makes sense that he sees that she takes her studies seriously as well, which yeah. I really, really like. Yep, absolutely. Um, so they're, they're in the, the Hogs... Um, there are three broomsticks. Three broomsticks, yep. excuse me. And Harry's under the invisibility cloak. Hagrid is there with Mad-Eye Moody. And it's interesting because both Hagrid and Mad-Eye Moody, don't they bring in their own drinks? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Mad-Eye Moody's Mad-Eye Moody bringing, obviously yeah. does. He brings yeah. in his his little flask, which he explains to the class is because he never wants to be poisoned. Yeah, he doesn't you know? trust anybody. So that makes sense. But it's interesting to note how often he's drinking from his own flask. Yep. So we as readers understand he's continually taking that polyjuice potion Correct. since he's Correct. FOMOD-y. Um, and yet his eye can see through the invisibility cloak. So he leans in and acknowledges that Harry's there, pretending to look, of course, at the spew paperwork. And Hagrid tells him, hey, I've got something to show you. Mm-hmm. Meet me at my house tonight at midnight. This is so cute. It's so cute that Hagrid does this because he wants to share the like the one thing that he truly loves, you know, magical creatures, whatever, but dragons mm-hmm. specifically with, you know, Harry. And yeah. then, of course, the with the other person that's going to be there, which is um, uh, Madame Maxime. Yeah, Madame Maxime. But before we get into that, Mary, I I have to hear your thoughts on Mad-Eye Moody's eye. Being able to see through 
a deathly hallow. How in God's name does this happen? <laughs> you know, I'm having a lot of difficulty with it. Um, <sighs> because this is a deathly hallow, true, true invisibility cloak. Right. Dumbledore recognizes Harry under the invisibility cloak, invisibility cloak in Sorcerer's Stone when he is looking in the mirror of Irised. And he says, you know, yeah, people have ways of like walking around and, and seeing stuff. Um, the Tales of the Beetle and the Bard, which we find in Deathly Hallows, the book that Dumbledore leaves to Hermione that explains the Deathly Hallows, the wand, the, the resurrection stone, and the, the, the invisibility cloak. Um, it's described as having a uniquely durable nature and is not described as indestructible, Im imperious, or immune to death's gaze. Mm -hmm. So um, the author wrote, invisibility cloaks are not generally infallible. They may rip or grow opaque with age of charms placed on them and they may wear off, those charms may wear off or be countered by charms of uh, revealment. Um, so this is different because this invisibility cloak would kind of never run out. Yeah, this comes from death himself. Mm -hmm. And how is it? First of all, right, first So he of, uses, Dumbledore uses a spell to detect Harry and Ron in the Chamber of Secrets book. Um, they're in Hagrid's hut and he uses that um, homonym revealio, like humans yeah. reveal yourself one. So he's able to do that. Whatever, I mean, like, the stats are for nerds for that because the way that I see it is that uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dumbledore is the greatest wizard alive. So uh, am, am I willing to wrap my brain around the fact that the greatest wizard al alive is able to see somehow a way through yeah sure okay i'll put i'll i'll, I'll go along to get along but mad eye moody and this eye this magical eye can see through it can see through well i think that that's the thing i think we have a misconception of this invis invisibility cloak i think we think this invisibility cloak means nothing can ever see through it and yet we're shown time and time again in the series that a few different spells they have to be special spells uh, hermione even figures out how to do that mm -hmm. um that spell to reveal if there's any humans inside and moody's eye which is a very uh, tough piece of magic it's not like anyone can make that magical eye that they can see through it what i think we need to understand is that this cloak will not tear will not rip will stay true all of time right. and if that's what we're looking at if we're looking at time and escaping death that way that the cloth itself will not die. I think that that's what it is. I don't think it's that no one can ever see through it. Right. I think that time and wear will not destruct it. So you yeah. can carry it through you until death. Or, or let's also say that it's a near perfect invisibility where other invisibility cloaks, yes. you know, the, Harry's got it's an the, extraordinary level. Harry's yeah. got the Ferrari, yes. you know, and then there's some jabroni running around with, with like a, a 1984 mm -hmm. Ford Escort. Of a uh, of an invisibility cloak, I think that's also fair to it's say. It's not too. saying that Moody's magical eye is of worth to be on the same level as a Deathly Hallow. It's not saying that. It's just I believe that this cloak can will never die. This cloak's magic will never cease. Sure. So hopefully that helps. Interesting, because as I was reading, and I'm like, how in God's name? Can Moody, Moody's eyes see through this thing? But uh, Dumbledore did. Like, that's yeah. the thing, is that I think it takes top-level stuff to be able to see through And it. then another part here that I would love to discuss, too, is the fact that Body Crouch Jr. just doesn't freak out when all of a sudden he looks around with this eye and he sees Harry Potter <laughs> under this blanket just <laughs> with Hermione. And it doesn't, doesn't like... Uh, break character doesn't do anything. He just is like, okay, well, I can see you. So, okay. Do the staff all know that Harry has this cloak? I say no. I say no as well. Would Dumbledore, out of protecting Harry, have told Foe Moody about this cloak? Oh. And remember, invisibility cloaks are a thing. None of them are as good as Harry's, but they're a thing. So who knows? people faux moody has walked by wearing an invisibility cloak being like oh cool i can see that cool i can see that you know how many things has he seen with this magical True. eye that he wouldn't have seen before yeah. so i don't think he's necessarily phased by it because you need to keep in mind this is late november right he's, and sorry, he's already, already, been, already been, it, yeah. been wearing this stuff he hasn't seen harry with this cloak yet but i feel like he's seen enough crazy stuff with the eye yeah fair fair i i, I just i'm more and more impressed with Barty Crouch Jr. 
as the book in character as the book goes along. I yeah. think he is a lot better of a wizard than the film gives him credit for. One hundred percent, and a great actor. I mean, let's be real. Yeah. He would have he would have slayed me in the different perspective <laughs> <laughs> on the Potterverse. Uh, Bangsur, Hagrid. What is wrong with you taking Madame Maxine on a date to see the dragons? Well, well, I, he, here's the thing. Bong Sewer. He, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Fool. I love the fact that Hagrid takes Madame Maxine on a date, quotes, on a date, to go see dragons. Again, because that's what he, he loves. loves. So like when I took you to go see the Red Sox on our second date, and I bought monster seats, it was like, Blake, why would you do that? Well, it's because that's what I love, and I want to share that with the person that I want to be with. And I hope that this person It was lovely. It. it was lovely. It was. I mean, we ended up getting married, so... Yeah, so it worked out in the end. It was worth the investment at the time. Those tickets cost so much I know. money. After that, I was like, oh just, God. you know, I'm a blockbuster, like, rent a movie, eat a pizza kind of girl. Yeah, but I'm not that. <laughs> I go big, or I go home. No, but like... Uh, I think we then proceeded to watch all of the Harry Potter movies. That, that's absolutely true. We did. Um, no, but like, God, those tickets cost so much money. Because at the time, Stop. it was special. Who cares? Uh, but it was worth it. It was worth it. Um, so, yeah, I like the fact that Hagrid does this. I like that he takes her to the dragons because that's what he cares about. That's what he wants to share with her. Do you do you see my my point of view here? Yes. And mind you, Harry, Hagrid is my fave. My fave character. So I'm giving him a get out of jail free card. But this is the competition. Like, of course, she's yeah. going to tell Floor, like, where's your brain? Hagrid isn't known for his brains. Okay? That's true. And Shouldn't so much so that. that and so much so that Karkaroff finds out that they're going to see the dragons and he scampers off after them. And a beautiful point that is Harry notes is that Cedric is now the only champion who oh, will not know. Yes, that's also what I wanted you to call out as well. I was really happy with, uh, well with done, Harry Hagrid. for doing Harry. that. Well, Gryffindors really care about things being fair. Really, really care about that. So I appreciate that. Um, we do get to see all these dragons. We get to be introduced to the Hungarian Horntail. It's interesting to note we get to see all of the different types of um, dragons, the Green Welsh. What did you think? The of- Chinese Fireball. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you know, like we get to meet all of them. And yet this title of this chapter is the Hungarian Horntail. A little misleading. Not well in some ways, and yet it's letting you know this is the important one. They're saying that one's deadly, yeah. both ends, uh, but really calling it out that this is the one that we need to pay attention to. You're you're right. It's not when when you look at the chapter, you're like, okay, this is the one where Harry faces the Hungarian Horntail. Right. No, it's Wrong. where he's introduced to all of the dragons, and right. he gets to understand what his task is. But his task, thank you to the chapter title, we know is actually going to be that. Hungarian yeah, it's foreshadowing Horntail. that his. Yeah. yeah, that that's the one we got to pay attention. We get to, to see Charlie Weasley. Yeah, and you know the 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 scene between Charlie and Hagrid here, I want to get your thoughts on. Uh, Norbert. Uh, it's it's a little bit of uh, exposition dump, in my opinion, where he's talking about all the different dragons, and oh, they, they spit huge flames of fire. Like, Hagrid already knows all this stuff. It's only being told for the benefit of the reader. Well, um, Hagrid's standing there with Madame Maxine, who probably doesn't know about it. And Hagrid's probably too close, and he's like, buddy, remember, they can spit. And this one, he needs to tell him, this one can spit 40 feet. Yeah, and that, again, is foreshadowing the importance for I mean, what we're going to I doubt Hagrid Harry. sits there knowing how many feet distance a Hungarian horntail can spit fire. He has to care for all the different creatures. He, yeah. he doesn't even know how to take care of yeah, his he, blasted we, screws. Well, we just got done saying that he has a specific it's love his, of dragons. Yes, but not every single dragon breed. I think Charlie is trying to help him. You know, if you were, you like dogs, right? You like dogs. I do like dogs. Okay. Or you like baseball. Let's take this. Sure. You like baseball. What's a team you don't know much about? The Cardinals. Sure. What else? Okay. Pretend that there's a whole bunch of people throwing balls and they were like, watch out, Blake. That pitcher on the Cardinals can probably hit you from where you're standing. You love baseball. Uh, but you I would probably know. know that. No, you wouldn't. I probably you don't. would. You don't know how far he can throw. I'm pretty sure that he can throw a distance oh that God. I'd be around. Anyway, sorry, Blake. <laughs> we're not all as smart as you. Stats are for nerds. Back at you. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy. This is what I put up with my friends. Anyway, give him a break. What I do love is we get to hang with Charlie, who we saw earlier in the book. Um, but we also get a remembrance of Norbert, the dragon that Hagrid kept, yes. you know, as he's longingly looking at these dragon eggs. Um, and Charlie's like, no, 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 no. 
I know I know your weakness. Yeah, I right. know your weakness is dragons. Yeah, you can't no. scoop one of these out. I already saved Norbert from you <laughs> in book one. <laughs> Not going to do this again. But we are told now that these are all mother dragons who are nesting with their eggs. And that, of course, is going to play a big re- role yeah. in the task. How does nobody in the school see these dragons? It's at night. Mm-hmm. And they're shooting huge plumes of fire and jets of flame into the air. Are students allowed out of the castle at night, Blake? No, but like exactly. But listen, if you saw a big giant uh, jet of flame, it's deep in the forbidden forest. Oh, man. I don't know. I I, I think this <gasps> is that's what is going on with you. We're in a magical <laughs> world, Blake. You drive me crazy sometimes. And then as he's walking oh. out, Harry's walking out. We bump into Karkaroff. Yes. Whatever. So we know what's happening yeah, right there. Sure. Um, Harry then goes in and he gets to have his conversation with Sirius. Sirius is very serious in this conversation. Oh, yeah. You don't mess around. He's like, listen, what else? Try Wizard Tournament. Let's talk Karkaroff. Mm-hmm. who you just bumped into. Yep. He's Bad News Bears. He was in Azkaban with me. Oh my God, the amount of times that he made me watch Big Bird in Japan. Him and Bellatrix <laughs> combined. I can't even take it anymore. Big Bird in uh, Japan. <laughs> 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 so they're Azkaban buddies, but not really. Um, so he knows him firsthand experience, okay? And he knows that also he needs to earn a little street cred with the Death Eaters because he turned a lot of them in. So he's yeah. trying to tell Harry, this is actually what you need to be nervous about. And I love this because here we are essentially, you know, halfway through the book, the author is now putting us down this trail. Watch out for Karkaroff, the person that Harry loves and, and treasures and believes in the most, is saying, Watch out for Karkaroff. Yeah. So, this thoughts. is the one adult that he can, this is the one person, actually, not even adult, but the one person he can feel comfortable with, knowing that he has his back no matter what. And it's also someone he like looks Hagrid up to. And- yeah, but he's gone the entire book withholding from people, withholding from his friends, mm-hmm. uh, saying, I don't want to bother them. About the I don't dream. Want, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do any of this stuff. And he even does it to, to Sirius to an extent. But he does tell Sirius. And, he, and at this point, it all just comes out like word vomit. It all just, you know, to Harry. And I just, I find that so special because he's no longer withholding from his godfather he he just allows himself to be himself whether it's harry freaking potter who's really scared and i don't know who to trust the thing that i actually take from this conversation is sirius has a lot of information and you can see that he's still on his game like he he, yeah he's been in azkaban for a while but he hasn't lost it like he still can put all this information together put up a theory about karkaroff about someone was trying to prevent moody from coming over there the whole thing with bertha jorkins all of that stuff if sirius could put this all together why do we believe that dumbledore is just walking around unknowing about any of this First off, and if we have to believe that, if we have, but if we if we have to believe one that he's walking around not knowing any of it, that means he's just not all there. I don't think he is now. Okay, then that's fine. Then you have to believe the opposite. He does know about all this stuff, and he's allowing it all to happen. I don't know how much he knows about Bertha Jorkins. The way that Sirius describes her. So here's what we have to keep in mind. Sirius Black, had he not gone through all of the hardships that he went through, probably wouldn't have been maybe one of the top auras. Definitely someone very, very important. We're talking about one of the most intelligent people. Yep. Most intelligent driven people. You know, he he and James combined really figured out, you know, how to become an anim- um and Anima- 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 I always mess up that word. And magi, and magi, and omega says whatever. They figured it <laughs> out. Okay, stubborn, stubborn suckers who figured this out. He is able to survive and escape Azkaban. So we need to really keep that in perspective right. about the intelligence and the street smarts that Sirius Black has. I don't think Dumbledore has the street smarts. Sirius has now also spent loads of time with the Death Eaters, grew up knowing Bertha Jorkins, knowing mm-hmm. her personality, hearing of what's going on, probably stayed in touch via Facebook about her job at the ministry, things like that. <laughs> Bertha Jorkins is not a person that Dumbledore would concern himself with. Madam Hooch? Yes. Professor Sprout? Yes. Some random jabroni lady that you know, was it Hogwarts before he was even headmaster? Probably not. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. You're welcome, Blake. <laughs> uh, and last, we get the the bump in. Oh, 
What do you think? Because I don't think, uh, yeah, you haven't read this story, so you won't know. What do you think Sirius was going to tell Harry was going to get rid of the dragon in one fell swoop? Oh, I have no idea. I have no, I have no clue. Fun fact, it's the conjunctivitis curse. Oh, really? And it is how Victor Crumb uh, takes down the dragon. Really? And you were going to learn this later on, but it's the weakness of the dragon. Mm -hmm. And um, I love this because obviously Victor, with all of his studying, figures this out. Sure. He hears from Karkaroff, it's dragons. He figures out what's the dragon's weakness. But yeah, it's just something as simple as that. Which, once again, street savvy, Sirius just knew off the top of his head. Yeah, I, I Why got Why would this. he need to know the weakness and the one spell to take down a dragon? Yeah, you're, you're walking through all the woods, so running the dragons here, here and there. He proves to you, once again, smart, smart guy. Last, let's wrap things up with this interaction with Ron. Ron, of course, busts in. Sirius has to disappear right before he can tell Harry to give the dragon pink eye. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Ron and him get into this little thing and what I love oh Harry's like why are you even walking around in the middle of the night right it's 1 30 in the morning Ron says I woke up and you weren't there and I didn't know where you were <gasps> oh oh he's still my heart Ron Weasley like you know yes we're fighting yeah but this is still my best friend right and he's kind of been going through a lot over these several years. And I don't know where he is. We continue to have this push and pull of who is right and who is wrong. And is Harry right for the, his reaction? Is Ron right for the way that he's reacting? They keep looking. They they keep looking for ways to figure it out, but in such a passive form, like the the non existence of a bridge at all is what is wrong not necessarily ron or harry would you agree with that yeah yeah I and then so. ron sorry about that i should have realized you didn't want to be disturbed i'll let you get back on practicing for your next interview in peace oh. but the line before this where um harry shouted he he knew that ron had no idea what he'd walked in on knew he hadn't done it on purpose but he didn't care at this moment he hated everything about ron right down to the several inches of bare ankle showing beneath his pajama trousers. You know, when you're so mad at someone and you're like, I hate even the way you hold a fork, you know? Yeah. That's that's where he's at right now. <laughs> I can look at Mary sometimes and she's looking at me like, stop breathing. Yeah. <laughs> and then he throws the Potter really stinks badge. It yeah. bonks Ron right in the head. And I loved this. There you go, Harry said. Something for you to wear on Tuesday. You might even have a scar now if you're lucky. That's what you want, isn't it? <laughs> Just dig, 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 dig. Oh, man. Uh, these poor boys. All right. That's the let's, worst. Let's continue. All right. You ready for uh Because we've different... been chatting about this chapter forever. I know. That's true. Different perspective time? Oh, good Lord. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let you think. But it, yeah. while while Mary thinks, I wanted to remind you that this different perspective is brought to you by the Mary and Blake store. We do have a ton of great collections, including Outlander and This Is Us and The Last Kingdom uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But more importantly, we have a collection for... Harry Potter and the Potterverse. So if you want to get your uh, Potterverse swag and you want to be able to represent Mary and Blake Media and all the nerds that are out there, go to the MaryandBlakeStore.com and check it out, especially in time for Black Friday. So hmm. Holiday season. Holiday season. Yeah, that's it. All right, Marvin, are you ready? Yes. All right, let's do it. Here we go. Holy cricket, you're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger. And you are... Madame Maxine. Oh, Madame Maxine. Bonjour, bonjour, na bonsoir. <laughs> no, no, no. First time, first time we've talked today. Uh, oh, yeah. First oui. time you've ever talked. Oui, oui, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You're, you're important. I'm very important. And I do not know how I got so lucky, but um, this guy Hagrid, he brought me to see the first task. <laughs> I love it. You want to know why? I just sounded yeah. like the Bulgarian minister, but yeah. it's okay. I love it because <laughs> he's my friend. <laughs> we like to joke on house elves. <laughs> so, um, so this guy I read, he, mm -hmm. I think he likes me. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Maybe, I, know, maybe I, know, I know. You're big. I'm well endowed. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he likes big butts and big other things. So, <laughs> so he invited me over for a midnight stroll. Oh, ooh la la, ooh la la. Voulez 
book of Shea avec moi. Um, and we went to the, the forest. It was very romantic. He kept talking. Kept talking, though. Harry. Like, <laughs> I think he has a little tick. It's okay. I can look over it because he showed me the first task. It's amazing. They're dragons. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going home right now. And I, I woke up floor. Hey, guess what? Sneaky, sneaky, <laughs> sneaky, very, very sneaky. <laughs> we did what the French do. We're sneaky. I don't really know if the French are sneaky. I'm just making it up. And just I throwing out blanket up. statements. That's okay. It's <laughs> look fine. it up. I don't know. Sorry, any French speakers. I'm not taking. <laughs> please. Um, <laughs> and we we made a whole plan, and it was a lovely day. And I didn't even have to kiss her. Read. <laughs> Last time he saw him, he had car grease in his hair. So gross. <laughs> But great day. It's a great day. Great day. I don't know. Do you like the movie Chocolat? <laughs> oui, oui. <laughs> Les poissons. <laughs> All right. The end. Oh, good job, Mary, as always. <sighs> Love it. Good Thank job. Thank you, Blake. All right, uh, it is now time for some email and questions. We have some emails here. Uh, again, we are going through our backlog. We will get to the current ones as soon as we can. Catch but it up, catch we're, it up. We're, we're catching right up, so let's do some questions here. Oh, Miles here. All right, Marvin, this one comes from Kelsey. She says, I am writing in today to say thank you for all your work that you put into all of your marketing and podcasting for not only the Potterverse, but all of your podcasts, by the way, if you like what Mary and I do here for this show, uh, please go to maryandblake.com. Check out all the great podcasts that we have and all the everything that we have over there. It's worth your time. Uh, this has given me something to look forward to every week for an hour or so to wind down and relax as life has only gotten more hectic this past year. However, I would like to play devil's advocate to Blake's hating on Spew. Oh. Now, I'm glad it didn't make it into the movie. But maybe Hermione is so upset about house elves and they're treating because she grew up in the muggle world. I don't know how the schooling works over there over the pond, but I know we grew up learning about slavery. And if she grew up the same way with that knowledge and seeing how house elves possibly mirror that, it would give her some grounds for spew being relevant. Food for thought. Um, so we are definitely taught about slavery here yes. in the United States. And I would say that even more so recently they have upped it in sure. the curriculum. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested to know like how much is, is taught, you know, how much time is taught because I feel like when, when we learned about it, when we would learn about Abraham Lincoln yep. in elementary school, We would learn around it about around Martin Luther King Jr. Day mm-hmm. in January, almost every year. Yeah, certainly. And then I feel like in American history, we learned more about it, but not that much. Not that much during that time. I feel like I learned more about slavery in my Here's elementary years. Here's what I'm going to say. Uh, you know, slavery was was banned in Europe, you know, far before it was in the, in the, United, in the United States, especially in England. Um. So I'm sure that there is some kind of education for English students mm-hmm. that the, the way that you know Hermione was educated in the in the Muggle world, and and again, it's not about the idea that Spew is bad. It's that the way that Hermione has gone about it, and the way that she has done her research or lack thereof and uh, acted in ways that she feels are better for the elves and what they think. That to me is just the mark of a a juvenile attempt at doing something like this. Mm -hmm. As a result, I can't take it seriously and I hate reading about it. That's okay, Blake. This one comes from Brayden. Brayden says, I have just two questions. First, how do you think the story would be different if Barty Crouch Jr. forgot to drink his flask during Harry's class. Marvin, what do you think? Like if he accidentally turned back into Barty Crouch Jr.? Yeah. Like, how would this... It's not... You can't say, well, there wouldn't be a... It wouldn't be a story. There would be. That'd be actually a cool story. Uh, I think that the kids would say stupefy and Harry would <sighs> recognize this guy from his dream. Ooh, that's good. And then Dumbledore would be called in, and Snape and McGonagall would do some Veritas serum right then and there. Yeah. And the end. And they would figure out that Harry's name was put in the Goblet of Fire, and Dumbledore would say, guess what? I've been able to like take him out of this competition all along because I'm the best wizard ever. And then they would just carry on with hmm. the rest of the time it was a tournament, and Cedric would win. And Voldemort's plan would be foiled. 
yet again. <laughs> <laughs> the next question is, uh, Blake, why do you call Mary Marvin? Sometimes either that it or it's me hearing things. Anyway, love the podcast. I just started listening to the MCU Diaries. Yay! Have a good day. Keep up the great work. That's right. The MCU Diaries covers all the Marvel television shows on Disney+. Plus. Go to maryandblake.com to check that out. Why do I call Mary Marvin? Because this is one of the most... Ron. Asked questions we have. <laughs> because I'm Ron Weasley. Because she's Ron. And all Ron Weasley does is... Eat. I'm always hungry. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> I'm starving Starving Marvin. Marvin. So... Um, it, it's it, honestly one of my most alike Ron character traits. Oh, absolutely. So <laughs> when we first started dating, I was like, man, you'll like starving Marvin. And uh, so I just We'd kept... we go on, on trips like to see the Red Sox. And I'm like, yeah. so what are we bringing for snacks? And he's like, Mary... <laughs> It's 30 minutes away. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to be there in a little bit. I'm part hobbit. <laughs> part hobbit. I asked her, you want a hot dog? Yeah, sure. Give me all the condiments. Yeah, because I realized, I thought I was actually having a dinner, not just a hot dog, which is like an appetizer to the hamburger. So I needed all the condiments. Blake does not know about 11Zs. <laughs> For all my Lord of the Rings fans. <laughs> and I do have 11 Z's. When I wake up early on the weekends, I have my first breakfast at 7. And then when Blake wakes up, I later have my second breakfast with him and the rest of the family oh, at 11. Oh, my God. All right. This one comes from Some Lisa. She says, I listen to your podcast during my one and a half hour commute to and from work. Damn LA traffic. Oh. And I always wanted to email you, but the minute I get out of the car, I would never get a chance to because between a demanding job as an educa educator and a mom of two younglings. Oh. That is a good Star Wars reference for you. I uh, just want to say that your Harry Potter, Harry Potter podcast is so amazing and it made me reread the books for the umpteenth time on the Kindle while waiting for my three-year-old to fall asleep. My sister got me into watching Outlander, but they go to <gasps> Sing um, me a song. maryandblake.com. Check out our Outlander cast. And then and listen to your Outlander podcast, of course. It's our sisterly bonding point now to compare what was shared between your That's podcasts. So Though we both love Outlander, she loves The Last Kingdom and Game of Thrones most, while I love Harry Potter and Marvel. Oh, I love it. Wait, these are our people. Yes. Lisa, come on. Lisa, Lisa. Come on, the train, girl. Uh, thank you for keeping me company on my drives, for making me laugh, and allowing me to be a small part of your lives. It was also heartbreaking to hear about all the things that have been happening to you. Oh. And uh, I've been struggling with various things as well. I'm sorry. I hope uh, everything is getting better for you guys. Uh, from a proud Hufflepuff and Nerd Clan member. Thank Lisa. you, Lisa. Well, I will say, Lisa, thank you uh, for being a Nerd Clan member. And I'm sorry about you being Hufflepuff. I was just going to say, I'm sorry you've gone through hardships too. <laughs> yes. No. We uh, are, uh, note, so I think I mentioned it in the last part of verse. I am having surgery doo -doo 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 -doo, October 12th. So hopefully yes. we'll have our episode regularly up. Yes. We'll see how it goes. Oh, as we week. said on the Last Kingdom podcast, uh, it, again, nothing, nothing life threatening. It's just, you know, Mary. We got some stuff to take care of here, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, so don't worry about that, but we'll see when the next series of podcasts comes it out. It should be on time. It should, it, I don't foresee there being any huge issues, but... Not having surgery in my mouth. No. <laughs> we're good with that. Uh, last one comes from Rebecca. Uh, she says, uh, my friend uh, my friend sent me a TikTok video. By the way, Blake, I promise you won't hate this like you hate TikTok. Uh, this video is of, is of a girl who records herself asking questions she saw in a video. The way that you answer the question is supposedly to, is supposed to be how you line up correctly with your Hogwarts house. Answer the questions before reading the answers below. And so here is the question. If you were trying to get in a room and the door was locked, what would you do? i kick it. That's what I did when my door was locked. <laughs> and I found there was an intruder inside. <laughs> and instead of calling the cops, they said, who the heck's in here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> so the answers as they are uh, related to the Hogwarts houses is that Ravenclaw would find the key. Oh, I didn't know there was one. <laughs> <laughs> Slytherin would be pick the lock. I could do that. Hufflepuff would be just knock on the door. Oh. And Gryffindor would be kick the door down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't kick it down. I kicked it open. Uh, Rebecca says, I'm a, a proud Hufflepuff and said in my head, I think I would just knock on the door and see if someone answered. <laughs> and I laughed so hard when she said the results in the video. I feel like y'all will both answer according to your houses, but I'm curious to see. Uh, thank you for the Potterverse while you're going through so much. We love y'all. We actually had our door locked today. It's too hard for me to kick. 
And Blake broke into our house. That's the, I, I broke right in. <laughs> Went in through one of the windows. <laughs> <laughs> High five. High five. All right. All right, Bob, are you ready to close this bad boy out? Yes. Let's do it. This was a long one. It was. We got... Fi- <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh Stop. So, all right, friendly, here, friendly. Here we go. All right, here we go. Close it out. <sighs> All right, everyone, this is your little reminder to take that screen grab, throw it up in your stories, let people know that if they're Harry Potter fans, to check out the Potterverse. You can also do it as a post on your Facebook wall. If you are on Facebook, we recommend that you check out the Mary and Blake Facebook community. It's an exclusive group for all of our podcast listeners just to nerd out and enjoy each other's company. In addition to podcasting and raising our kids and dealing with Blake, I also... <laughs> dealing with Blake. Thank you. That's very nice of I you. I love you. Um, I also love to help people feel more confident and creative when it comes to their makeup and skincare. Uh, my website is minutewithmary.com. You can search the hashtag Minute with Mary, but this month, the month of October, mm-hmm. I'm throwing a Harry Potter themed beauty class. Oh, so hey if girl. you like makeup or even if you don't like makeup, but obviously you like Harry Potter, you're going to want to be in on this class. So please search that hashtag Minute with Mary. Be my join my group, my Minute with Mary group on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, find me on Instagram, as I assume you're most likely there. Um, and just send me a message and say, I want to be a part of this. How yeah. do I do this? Do it. Do yes. it. That's that you want to be with Mary doing all the looks. That Swish, she and can flick, do. Swish and Swish flick, man. Swish and flick. All right, let's close this out. Okay. Are, you, are you done? You got yes, all, you're my all name's set? Mary. My name is Blake. <laughs> Mischief managed. <laughs>